please stand with your Bibles. We're going to John, the fifth chapter. And we're going to begin reading at verse 2. John, the fifth chapter. We're going to begin reading at verse 2. And it reads, Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first at whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Hallelujah. Verse 5. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him and said, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I'm coming, another step down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on that same day was the Sabbath. And then jump down to verse 15 and it says, The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, another opportunity to stand before your people. God, right now be in our midst. Touch us through your word. Speak to us through your word. Stir us through your word on today, Lord God. Father God, we'll give you the honor and the glory. Father God, right now we come against distractions. We thank you, God, that, that your word is true, your word is life, and your word is going to take us where we need to go. This is our prayer in your son Jesus' name. We pray and all God's children say it. Amen. 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 As you're taking your seat, will you lean over and ask somebody, do you want it? Ask them, do you want it? 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 So what's the it? You fill in the it. We have crossed over from 2018 into 2019. And last year, some of us had so many resolutions. We had some things that we wanted to accomplish. And maybe we didn't accomplish those things. And, but we moved them and put them on our 2019 list because we didn't make them in 2018. But could it be that you didn't accomplish it in 2018 because you maybe you said it, but you really didn't want it? You might, we say a lot of stuff. We, we say all kinds of stuff. We say, I want to be in a relationship. We say, I want to be rich. We say, I, I, I want to go back to school. We say, I, I want to own a business. I want to, I want all this stuff that we want. But we say it with our mouth, but our actions don't follow what what our mouth is said. Do you want it? There, there is a formula and, and, and a way that you can tell if you really want what you say. And that's what we're going to talk about today, the formula. How do you know? Because we, we don't want to be going into 2019. I believe that God has opened so many doors for each and every one of us. God has, has taken the, 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 the stop off. God has give, given us opportunity. But it's up to us to move in and step into the opportunities that the Lord has provided for us. Is it just me? I see limitless possibilities in 2019 God can do anything and he's written us a blank check but he needs us to want what we say we want and in order for us to move it's going it's going it's going to take more than some words it's going to take more than most of us we we go to these vision board parties and write up all this pretty stuff don't practice a thing 
We say we want a good relationship, but we date knuckleheads. We say we want a, a beautiful, fabulous piece of property, whether it's income or to live in, but we're not working on our credit or saving like we're supposed to. We say, Lord, use me. This is your Lord, and you can, I'm going to do this for you, and I'm going to do that for you. But do you go to Bible study or Sunday school or do you get in your word? Do you pray regularly? Do you lay before the Lord? Are you seeking his face? Do you want it? Don't fool yourself and say, I want this, but your actions, you have made one step in that direction. The time out, God has opened doors. He's saying, right now, I'm giving you this chance. I'm giving you this opportunity. He's saying, look, all 2019, whatever happened in 2019 happened. You can't, you can't, de you know, whatever happened, whatever things that you regret or whatever you didn't happen, whatever. At this point, you are where you are. And you've got to make some decisions. I know I've made some decisions that 2019 is going to be the best year that I've had thus far in my life. You know, that's what was going on in this story. Jesus, remember, he met the man at the pool. Jesus, he, he, the, Jesus it said he came to town during their festive season. And instead, of, I noticed Jesus, instead of going to the palace or going to all these other places that he could go see, he went to this pool called Bethesda. And when he made it to the pool, at this pool was nothing but sick people. People that had a need, people that had desires and wants. Jesus went where the need is. I just I just preached to somebody. Y'all missed it. <laughs> Jesus is where the need is, where there's a want, where there's a desire, where there's a thirst for him. That's where he goes. He goes. He goes where he's wanted, where he's expected, where he's needed. At this pool, they didn't even know that Jesus was coming. They knew that at this pool that there was it, there was it was supposed to be some mystical things going on in the water. It was it, was, it was, had been told that angels at a, at a certain time the trouble would trouble the waters and the water would begin to bubble and erupt. And whoever made it into the pool first got whatever they needed done. It said that they, there were the sick there. The, when it said that they they were input, and it meant that they lacked strength. That they had the inability to move. And they say in some cases they, these people had a palsy. Consider cerebral palsy. Others, the, this man here, he, he, he said he was impotent. He couldn't move. He needed help to do whatever he needed to do. In our text on today, it says that the man was there and he had been coming to this same place for 38 years. Some people have been here a long time. <laughs> Some people have been coming a long time watching everybody else get what they need and you're sitting on the sideline. Lord, is today my day? L Lord, Lord, is today, is today the time that, that I'm going to get what I need? Look, look, is today the water's going to be trouble for me? On this particular day, the waters were in the process of being troubled. And can you imagine Jesus coming up to the man and said, hey, will you be healed? In other words, do you want it today? You've been coming here too long. Do you want it today? Oh, some of y'all. Do you want it today? Do you want it? And the man began to do like so many of us do. Coming up with reasons why he ain't got what he wants. The man started going into excuse mode. Um, well, you know, every time the water go down, um, my boss don't like me. Um, you know, the man always trying to keep a brother down. Um, you know they got their favorite picks. 
So they never, I ain't got nobody to put my name in the box. If, if somebody would speak up for me, you know, then I'd be able to get what I need. The man started talking about everything except for what Jesus was talking about. Jesus said, do you want it? Do you want to come out your situation? Do you want to change? Do you? He didn't ask who been holding you back. He didn't ask what happened to you when you were a kid. He didn't ask what kind of circumstances you grew up in. He didn't care if you were the middle child. Jesus, was, he didn't care if you didn't have a million dollars in the bank. You could be broke, busted, and disgusted. Jesus said, do you want it? And I know to many of us that, that seemed like, a, a you know, like, like why is Jesus asking this man? Of course he wants it. No, that question seemed like it's simple until you unpack it. Uh, yeah, I want it. I, I want to be. Look, look. The man, it, it just, it, when you look at this, it was crazy. The man started saying, they, they, and what they did, and what they, and he's not looking at himself. This is what really blessed me. Oh my God. The man is complaining about other sick people <laughs> jumping in front of him. Evidently, could it be they wanted it better than what you wanted? <laughs> could it be that they willing to get there early, push, shove, do whatever they got to do? Because I want this. I'm not just talking about what I want. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get what I want. <laughs> I ain't talking about, look, if you don't want it too bad, shame on you. Keep talking while I'm making it to the edge of the pool. <laughs> he was complaining about other sick people who were in need just as much as he did. Some were in better shape, some were in the same shape, some were in worse shape. But they wanted it and they were willing to do whatever it took. If I got to stay up late, if I got to go, look, you say you want the job. What does the job entail? Is it requiring going back to school? Is it requiring updating your skills, taking a class here or there? If you want it, you're going to do whatever it takes to get. You, you say you want to be married. Are you preparing yourself for marriage? Are you, are you seeking the right, make, if ladies, 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 ladies. The Bible says you're supposed to make yourself available, meaning to the right person. Don't sit there and date with somebody, well, he got potential. If he ain't using that potential, there's a problem. You look, it, it look, put hope where hope is deserved. <laughs> if he still got a, I remember this young lady, she was tell, she's of a different faith. And she was like, I'm, I'm getting married. I'm, I'm going to get married. And she dated this gentleman. And the gentleman, he was talking a good talk, but he didn't show her anything. And she said, well, what do you think? I said, I think you're wasting your time. He has nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You pick him up because he has no car. He has no job, no benefits. <laughs> she said, but I want to be married and he's he's interested. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you think? I told you. <laughs> This ain't the one. <laughs> but he talk a good talk. Yeah, he, he's talking, but he's not doing. <laughs> he's talking and not bringing nothing to the table. You got the benefits. You got the car. You got the house. You have a bank account. You get up and go to work every day. He's dropping you off in your car. <laughs> He can't afford not one note or the insurance every month. 
and he doesn't want to. <laughs> But I want it. No, you don't. Because if you want it, you set yourself up for success. <laughs> your, your goal should be wait until, look, Lord, I, I'm preparing myself. I know what it takes to be a good wife. I've read the scriptures. I know that, that it's going to take give and take and we're going to partner together. And, and I know what a man of God looks like according to scripture. Man, brothers, brothers. Well, she, she fine, so I know she good wife material. Whole lot of fine ones can't cook, can't clean. Look, don't don't want to work. They want to be well maintained. In order to get what you say you want, you got to define what you want. The man in our story, he wanted to walk. But the problem is he wanted to walk, but he didn't have purpose in his walk. He wanted to walk. He wanted legs, but he didn't. Well, okay, once you get legs, where are you going with them? <laughs> Do you realize that if you say that you want something, you don't, it'll be proof in the way that you act? When, 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 when we looked at this text, this man, in order for him to really get, because that was a probing question Jesus asked. Do you want it? W will you be made whole? The man, had be, he, he had to do one thing that most of us, oh, this is going to be offensive to somebody. The man had to shut up and listen first. <laughs> he had to do, stop doing so much talking and then start saying, wait, what's going on here? What are you really asking me? The man had to begin to see possibilities in the question that Jesus asked. The man, when he, when he started, yeah, but they don't, ain't no man there to help me. And ain't no man, you know, to, to help me in the pool. And no, nobody won't lift me up when I'm down. Nobody won't encourage me. Nobody won't buy me this. Nobody won't take me there. Do you realize, this is to show you how the man, like so many of us, is missing it. He says, no man is there to help me. Sir. Didn't he say, sir? Sir, meaning that he recognized that Jesus was a what? A man. <laughs> I have no man, but a man is talking to me. I have, look, what you need is directly in front of you. You, you you're so busy complaining, you're missing options and opportunities. Some of us have been where we are because we're missing what's directly in front of us. We come week after week after week after week after week after week. We read scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. We hear sermon after sermon after sermon after sermon telling us what to do, when to do, and how to get there. But we're missing it because we're looking at people, looking at a man. I have, I'm waiting on a man and Jesus told the man, look, you don't need nobody. Look, right now you have the man in front of you and I'm giving you an option to make your situation better. But it depends on you. You have to want it. I can't want it for you. Jesus said, do you want it? Because the man needed to make a decision that I'm going to change. I'm going to change my perspective. Oh, that's it. Okay. 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 I get it. I get it. I get it. The man sitting up there watching everybody else get healed and complaining about it. It's all about perspective. He's complaining. They keep jumping in front of me. Those sick people won't allow me to get around them. Don't they know that I'm sick too? He's watching and complaining. When in exact in, 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 in reality, God was showing him what success looks like. <laughs> Who has God put in your life that you hating on that's an example of what you need to do? Who has he put around you that is doing some of the stuff that you want to do? 
But you're too busy picking, a, picking them apart and you're not missing that they are the route to what you need. Directly in front of you. Do you want it? Are you so busy complaining and seeing negativity that God, you're missing what God is putting directly in front of you? God has put some people in our lives to di direct us and guide us and feed into us. But all that we see is the glass is half empty. They work hard for what they got. They think they're this because they, they, they have that. No, they don't. They just enjoy what they have because they earned it. They did what it take to get it. You, if you would do what you take to get it, I want a deep prayer life. We'll start praying. <laughs> I want to become a, 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 a theologian in God's word. Well, just start reading and studying and, and consecrating yourself. Do you want what you say you want? Jesus challenged the man. <laughs> Jesus challenged the man. And I'm challenging you all today, whatever you have said and stated that you want, that you need, that you desire, what are you going to do in order to get it? How are you going to, look, the man had to do some personal inventory. The man had to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> What I've been doing for 38 years has not been working. Even though it's comfortable, it has not been working. It has not been yielding the results that I want. In order for me to get, I got to do something different. Maybe I got to switch my circles. Maybe I got to stop talking a certain way. Maybe I got to give a little bit more to the Lord of myself. Do you want it? Don't say it if you don't mean it. I, 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 I want this. Well, st start making baby steps. The man began to do some personal reflection. Because remember, at first he's looking at everybody else, complaining. They jumping in front of me. They, they, look, look, Minister Shalisa got married. Look, they bought a house, they bought a car. They did this. You can too. You serve the same God that they served. Make some choices. Make some decisions. Alter your life. Alter your life. Don't alter somebody else's life. Take your eyesight off of the other folks. It was at a point where Jesus began to see the man that there was a spark on the inside. He said, okay, not, not, because remember, first the man complaining. Then all of a sudden he shut up and took his eyes off the people and started putting his eyes on Jesus. I just said something. He took his eyes off the people and started putting his eyes on Jesus. He, look, the only thing he was supposed to see from the other people was possibilities. If they got healed, I can get healed too. If God is in the healing business, that means healing is an option for me. Getting better is an option for me. If God did it for them, he's going to do it for me. It was at that point that, that the man, he got sick and tired of being sick and tired. He got sick and tired of complaining. Sick and tired of laying there on the side of the pool watching everybody else succeed. He got sick and tired. And then it was at that point that Jesus said, now take up your bed and walk. That was loaded. The man had to take hold of what had been holding him. <laughs> he had to take hold of the thing that had been holding him hostage. He had to grab it and control it. What in your life has been controlling you, but it's time for you to control it? Is it depression? Is it whatever? What, is, what has been holding you back? Do you want it? The man had to make a decision and before I know it, because, oh, this is, hear this, hear this. Because he believed what Jesus said. He didn't qualify it. He didn't care. When Jesus said, take up your bed and walk, before you know the man was like, yeah. <laughs> he 
wasn't trying to rationalize it. He wasn't trying to let it make sense. He just believed the word. Tell your neighbor, believe the word. <laughs> believe the word. There's power in the word. Just believe the word. If you say you want what you want, just start believing it. Start moving forward. Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. In other words, the man had to get up. He had to get up and move. <laughs> he had to stop talking and start it moving. His strength came when he heard the word. And once he heard the word, he believed what he heard. Most of us, we miss out because when the word comes forth, we start trying to rationalize it and process it and come up with a plan when all you have to do is trust because it's God's word because he said it start moving in the direction that he wants you stop looking at other folks stop stop saying this or coming up with reasons why it's not going to work start moving the man he came to a point where it wasn't about other people it wasn't about, it, it was about if Jesus said I can do it, then I can do it. He wrote me a blank check. He said, everything is possible. Take up your bed. In other words, he was putting the responsibility and the earnest back on the individual. I'm waiting on somebody to, you know, I'm waiting on the hookup. They're going to give me the hookup. They're going to put my resume in front of the manager. Um, they're going to slip my application through the process. They're going to, Jesus said, uh-uh, you do your part. You get up. You go get the skills. You go back to school. You plan for the business. Even though it's hard. He, look, it, it, it looked impossible. Because remember, he's talking to a man that ain't moved in 38 years. Some of you, your situation is looking impossible. Everybody standing around, even when you start moving up, they see a little twitch. They're going to talk crazy, but it ain't about them. It's about you. It's about you going after what you want. It's about you getting what you said you want. He said, do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? You got to want it. You want it bad enough, you'll do whatever it takes. I was watching this video. And, and, and this car had came smashing through this crowd and this woman's baby had gotten hit and the baby was um, was like half the car was on the baby and these folks was trying to push the car and get it off the baby the mama I want my baby mama ran up there and was like before you know it that car started moving and it plopped over on this side Mama did this because she wanted her baby. She wanted to, when, when you want it bad enough, you will do the impossible. Jesus said, I'm giving you the strength. I've opened the door. Jesus said, I brought some of y'all into 2019 to show you that the possibilities are unlimited. He said, I'm, I, I allowed you to make it over. So that we can do some different things. Am I preaching to anybody? When I saw this in the text, he was like, do you want it? Do you want it? How bad do you want it? When you want it bad enough, look, look, man, if you want that woman bad enough, you start showing up places where you know she's going to be. <laughs> I was just in the neighborhood. <laughs> When you want it, you will shift you so that you can get it. The problem is the body of Christ has had this entitlement thing where we expect everything to shift to us. Anything in scripture that has happened that was great, it took either the faith of the individual or the individual to make some kind of move. They had to make a decision. I challenge you today, if you want, just start going after it. Write it out, plan it out, then say, Lord, this is my step one. Lord, I'm trusting you in the area of my finances. Lord, I'm trust. Look, we say we want to lose weight, but we won't change our diet. 
We want exercise. Oh, I just stepped on too many toes. I done lost my crowd. <laughs> Whatever you want, it takes a life shift. It takes a shift in your mindset. You can't always see the negative. Some of us, unfortunately, if you don't hear and change, you'll be in this endless cycle of negativity. And you'll be like, Lord, Lord, my life ain't getting no better. Lord, and the Lord said, it's your fault. <laughs> it takes you shifting. It takes you, if, if you're in a bad relationship with somebody and, and, and you know that, that, that things ain't working out, I have this one relative of mine. Hopefully they're not watching. <laughs> because I love this particular relative. I love them with all my heart. But I know they're special. Y'all know. I make sure that when we talk, the conversations are set in a way that it can't go negative. When I feel it going negative, I'm like, okay, um, I love you. Um, I'll talk to you later. And then I make sure that whenever we talk, I'm in, I have to be in a certain space. Whereas I can tolerate, because y'all ain't seen me, I'm flip at the mouth. <laughs> oh, I am flip. And I know that if I decide to cut, I cut deep. So I said, Lord, I'm the pastor, so I can't do that kind of stuff. But I make sure that I'm in the right, I had to shift me for the sake of the relationship. I could not be in, not be in relationship with the individual because they're my family, I love them. And so I'm gonna do whatever it takes to maintain the relationship. So in order to, since they wasn't gonna change, I had to change. It cost me nothing because I want the relationship more than I want the drama and the craziness. What are you willing to change and shift in you so that you can get what you want? What changes are you willing to make? Well, they don't have to come to me. No, they don't. Evidently, you don't want it. God is saying that if you want it, shift your mind. Shift your mind. Start turning whatever the negative thing into a positive. Find the positive. It's there. I told you the man was looking and he's seeing all these folks giving in front of him getting healed. To him, that was negative because they're getting what I don't have. But the positive was that God is still working miracles. God is still healing. God is still delivering. God is still setting free. God is still showing itself strong in the earth. And God loves everybody. So you are just as entitled as they are. My challenge today is do you want it? Will you shift your circumstances? Will you shift you? Will you do something different? And when I say different, I don't mean different in a better way. Stand to your feet for a second. Jesus said in the text, to the man, he was saying it without saying. He said, I want to put you in a position so that you can move forward in your life. Jesus is saying right now, whatever you've been dealing with, whatever you've, you've been struggling with, whatever, whatever that thing is that, that you say that you need that will make you whole, he's saying it's open and available to you. He's saying, but he needs you to help him so that you can make your own miracle. Who am I talking to on today? That you can make your own miracle. But it's going to require the difference um, between your vision, your perspective. If something good happens to somebody, do you always have to pour water on their fire? Jesus is saying, the thing I loved about this particular text is when the man started complaining, 
Jesus didn't even acknowledge his complaint. Jesus said, I don't care how you got to where you are. Jesus said, I don't care what happened. Whatever happened in the past don't matter right now. He said, it, it, right, it's all about this moment. He said, right now your whole life can be transformed, both naturally and spiritually. Do you want it? Hallelujah. Let me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today, Lord, as, as empty vessels ready to receive from you on today. Father God, right now, I pray that you would stir us as a people. Stir us both here in God and those even across the Internet, God. Father God, right now, we're asking that you would, since the door is open, Lord God, allow us to walk through it, God. Father God, right now, we're going to move forward based on your word. Based on the fact that you said that we can have whatsoever we want, God. Father God, we're going to change our language. We're going to change our mindset. We're going to change and, Father, and be open to the new possibilities that you have before us. Father, if you open the door, we promise to go through it. Father God, if you lead us, we promise to follow. Father God, right now, we cast aside and, and everything that wants to take our vision away from you, Lord God. We don't see people, we see you, Lord God. Father God, I thank you right now that after today, we will never be the same. I thank you that we'll begin to see visions and dream dreams, God. God, I thank you right now that we'll begin to walk in purpose, supernatural purpose, Lord God. Father, you're going to put your super with our natural. Hallelujah. Father God, right now, we declare that we are your people. We take our authority here in the earth. Father, we thank you that as we move forward, God, like you did for Joshua, the waters will begin to roll back and we'll begin to walk across on dry land. We thank you that every step we move forward will open a new door, God. We thank you that your people will be blessed. That you will begin to use all our gifts, all our talents, all our anointings, Lord God, for your kingdom purposes. Father God, you have the power. We trust you. We look to you because you have what we need. Father God, we thank you right now that even as, as situations pop up and occur, Lord God, we're going to find you in them. We're going to find glory in even the hardest trials, God. Father God, be with us. Not just now, but from here on out, Lord God. Draw us closer to one another and closer to you, Father. Our trust is in you. We thank you that the devil is defeated. That he only presents opportunities for your glory to manifest. We won't look to the left or to the right, but we'll look to you, God. We thank you right now for strength. We thank you right now for healing. We thank you for right now for deliverance. Hallelujah. 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 right now stir us up breathe on us anoint us afresh we don't look at the size of the mountain lord god but we look at the god who created the mountain and we shall leave in victory in jesus name we pray and all god's children said amen amen, amen.